angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. The creature is wanted for a murder he didn't commit. David Banner is believed to be dead, and he must let the world think that he is dead until he can find a way to control the raging spirit that dwells within him. We've come. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Uh, you wouldn't indeed, Mr. McGee. You wouldn't like David Banner when he's angry, but we do because we're incredible Hulk fans. This is Will. This is um, a hulking, hulking Incredible Hulk fan. And we're going to be talking many things, including Incredible Hulk. And But the key and the core and the connective tissue is Mr. Kenneth Johnson. The Six Million Dollar Man. The Bionic Woman. The Incredible Hulk. The Alienation Cliffhangers. Any of them ring a bell? <laughs> they certainly ring a bell with me. And I got to say that growing up, looking at television in the 70s and 80s, Kenneth Johnson's name was attached to so many productions. All the TV shows I just listed, all Kenneth Johnson productions, either the creator of the the whole show or the head writer, usually the the, the creator. And Cliffhangers, I really enjoyed it. only lasted 10 episodes or so. They actually sort of spun off um, two movies, two Dracula movies, Dracula 79 and The World of Dracula. And that was my favorite in the Cliffhangers from the, you know, the Cliffhanger show was The Curse of Dracula. And the other ones were uh, sort of action, I guess, adventure, uh, you know, formats. Yeah, The Secret Empire and Stop Susan Williams, starring Susan Anton. And I had no idea that Kenneth Johnson also uh, created cliffhangers. Looking up the uh, the wiki uh, summary here, and um, it's uh, it's incredible. Again, this uh, this writer, producer, director has made such a significant contribution to to science fiction, and most notably, and most uh, of all, and significantly, television science fiction. And he pretty much got his start on Six Million Dollar Man. That certainly was one of his first big shows as uh, as one of the writers. Right, he wrote ten episodes of the Six Million Dollar Man that premiered in seventy five, and so he wrote uh, ten episodes of, of the Six Million Dollar Man. Then he created the Bionic Woman, which of course was a spinoff starring Lindsay Wagner. He created um, and wrote. 58 episodes and directed three episodes. Well, it, uh, he was the creator of, yeah, creator says 58 episodes, wrote and directed three episodes, wrote seven episodes. Then he went on to The Incredible Hulk, which uh, wrote and directed four episodes, wrote three episodes. I think that's a little bit more, but I'm, I'm looking at the summary of the, uh, you know, the wiki here. But he, he, well, you know, he developed it because The Incredible Hulk, of course, was created by Stan Lee and you know, that, that's a comic book uh, based on the comic book. And then he went on to create the, he created, he wrote, directed, and produced. That's the great science fiction miniseries, which aired in uh, 1983. It got a second part, the V, the final battle. And then it got a, a, a t television show. Uh, uh, I don't think Kenny Johnson was really um, a part of the other, you know, I think he had a falling out for V, the final battle. And, um, and then the TV show he didn't uh, he didn't participate in, uh, and then after uh, after that he did um, oh he did yeah it says yeah he did the show Visitors yeah V or Visitors and um, so he had involvement in that and that was 1984 uh, created by Kenneth Johnson the TV show okay right so uh, he did do that um it's just so much uh you know so much great science fiction and genre tv that uh Kenneth Johnson is responsible for and then the um i guess one of the one of the last big uh series he did uh, 
and developed was Alienation, and that was 1989, and that ran for 22 episodes, but then they did, they produced five films, spin-off films, and Kenneth Johnson, he did most of the films. He either directed and or wrote most of the Alienation films. Right, it, it debuted in uh, 1989, and the films lasted, there was five, right, and he directed, he directed all of them, and he wrote, he wrote, uh, or co-wrote a lot of them, yeah, so just an incredible output, and, you know, just so influential, I know, as, you know, for so many people, I know for me, just the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman alone and then The Incredible Hulk. I mean, those three shows were just such, you know, foundations for my love of science fiction and action and genre. And uh, Kenneth Johnson was behind them all. And so now, today, of course, with all the the grand renaissance of the Marvel comic book movies, the uh, MCU, right, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and DC, we're so used to comic book heroes. We're so used to comic book characters on, on movies and, and TV shows, but back then, they were not common. We had seen Batman before with Adam West, we had seen a Spider-Man, I guess a limited series, where they did TV movies, and I think it went to a series as well, but The Incredible Hulk was really, you know, and remains, um, and Wonder Woman too, of course, but Incredible Hulk really remains one of the most successful. So at the time, he had to speak, uh, or he had to work with um, the co-creator, of course, of um, Hulk is Stan Lee. So this is a quote from a Stan when he said, you know, when he was going to work with uh, Kenneth Johnson, when we started the TV show, Ken said to me, you know, Stan, I don't think the Hulk should talk. The minute he said it, though, I knew he was right. And uh, I had the Hulk talking like this in the comics, Hulk crush, Hulk get him. I could get away with it in a comic, but that would have sounded so silly if he spoke that way in a TV show. And it's true because, you know, in a comic book, you can, you can get away with a lot. Once you, you know, do a live action, even when you do maybe a cartoon and even animated stuff, you, you know, you've got to be a little bit more grounded, but certainly in a live action show. And so other changes were that they pared down the Hulk's uh, strength. He was much stronger in the comics. Certainly, um, probably the strongest next to, say, a Thor, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a Silver Surfer, you know, uh, or, or maybe the Thing from Fantastic Four. Hulk is really kind of the strongest. And he keeps getting stronger, you know, because of his rage factor. But of course, one of the other things they changed was the uh, the name in the in the comic book. It's Dr. Bruce Banner, and Kenneth Johnson changed it to David Banner. And he said that was sort of a a bit of a tribute to honor his son David. But according to both Stan Lee and Lou Ferrigno, it was also changed because CBS thought the name Bruce sounded too gayish, a rationale that Fer Ferrigno, Lou Ferrigno, thought was the most absurd, ridiculous thing he had ever heard. And then on the DVD commentary, Johnson says that it was a way to honor his son, David. Bruce ultimately became the TV Banner's middle name, as it had been in the comics. It is visible on, the, on Banner's tombstone at the end of the pilot movie. And this is great. In an interview with Kenneth Johnson on the season two DVD, he explains he had wanted the Hulk to be colored red rather than green. His reasons were that red, not green, is perceived as the color of rage, and that red is a human color, but green is not. Yeah, I guess green is plants, right? Green is, is foliage. But Stanley, an executive at Marvel Comics at the time, said that the Hulk's color was not something that could be changed because of its iconic image. And then further, Stanley um, gave an interview in 2000, says the Hulk was done intelligently. It was done by Ken Johnson, a brilliant writer, producer, director. He made it an intelligent adult show that kids could enjoy. He took a comic book character and made him somewhat plausible. Women liked it, men liked it, and teenagers liked it. It was beautifully done. He changed it quite a bit from the comic book, but every change he made made sense. And this is a really great bit of uh, trivia here. The uh, role of Dr. David Banner, Kenneth Johnson cast Bill Bixby, his first choice for the role. Then Jack Colvin was cast as Jack McGee, the cynical tabloid newspaper reporter who, you know, pursues him. And it was all modeled after Les Miserables. And Jean Valjean was the, you know, Bruce Banner, or the David Banner character in this case, and Javert, the uh, you know, the police inspector that pursues him throughout the story, is the uh, Jack McGee character. So that whole dynamic, uh, he got inspiration from from the uh, from the novel, from the Les Miserables novel. 
And finally, uh, this is great, Arnold Schwarzenegger auditioned for the role of the Hulk. He wanted it, but was rejected because he was too short due to his inadequate height, according to Johnson in the commentary on The Incredible Hulk. So there you have it. I mean, you know, we can go on and on. I think I'm going to do another Kenneth Johnson Part 2 because we could go on about the Bionic Woman and V and Alienation, and it's uh, it's just a real, complete, you know, um, science fiction sort of history, television science fiction history, certainly. And if you want to go over that TV science fiction, Kenneth Johnson has to be mentioned. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you're enjoying Sci-Fi Guy and everything we have. And keep on listening. Keep on feedbacking and messaging us. You can do the freebie. Subscribe if you have not. If you want to do a paid tier, you can do the paid people. Four ninety nine, dollars Pretty good deal. It's a bargain. Or as I like to say, it's a bargonza. It's just an absolute bargonza. Either or, keep on listening. Keep on reading and go watch some Kenneth Johnson science fiction. You'll be glad you did. We'll see you soon.